attaching a computer to your television opens up a great deal of entertainment content that was previously unavailable to you in the living room. But since you're not sitting right in front of the screen, it might not be as easy as using your cable or satellite box. Thankfully, there are a host of Media Center applications that can solve this problem for us, like Windows Media Center, Front Row, and XBMC. In this video, I'll be guiding you through one of the most popular of these applications, Boxy. Boxy is free to use and only requires a computer running Windows, Mac OS X, or Linux and a registration on the Boxy website. It also runs on Apple TV, but not quite as smoothly and not without a bit of hacking. The Boxy interface is quite simple once you understand it, but it can be a little confusing at first. The home page brings in content from your feeds and your queues. The feed section is content shared by your friends, so if you don't have any friends on Boxy yet, you'll mainly see content recommended by Boxy staffers. You have personal control over the queue, which is a list that you can add just about any content on Boxy too. You can also add TV shows to your queue, so that whenever a new episode is released, it'll automatically appear there. All the content that you want to access is divided by type. Photos, music, TV, movies, etc. The apps and files section I'll get to in a little bit. The layout of these sections is pretty consistent, if a little confusing at first. The main screen is the My menu. My photos, my music, my movies, you get the idea. These allow you to browse content by its cover art. All of the content stored locally is available, though you can also add online content here as well. There's also a menu bar that's hidden unless you press left. This menu allows you to search and sort your content. The TV section is unique in that there's also a TV library option, which allows you to browse some of the most popular TV shows that are available online. When you're in any of these sections, you can access just about any other section or go back to the home page by opening up the pop-up menu by pressing back or escape. You'll also notice that there's empty boxes in the bottom of this menu. These are called shortcuts. There's the option of adding a shortcut in the menu of just about anything. Press the add shortcut button and it'll show up here. The kinds of content you can access with Boxy can essentially be divided into two categories. There's the stuff stored locally on your computer, and there's stuff that's available on the web. The stuff stored locally can be just about any kind of photo, video, or audio file. Boxy is able to play just about any type of file you throw at it. This is, of course, with the exception of any DRM lock content. This means just about any video content you've bought from iTunes is not accessible through Boxy. For more info on how to digitize your DVDs, you can watch my video on how to rip a DVD. To allow Boxy to find your local content, you'll have to specify where it is. Go to Settings, Media, Local Sources, Add New Source. Find the folder where it's located, specify what kind of media it is, and how often you want Boxy to scan it. Scanning allows Boxy to pull cover art, descriptions, and other metadata from various online sources. This brings your content into the My Menus for easier browsing. Scanning takes some time, so you'll likely have to wait a little bit after you've added a folder before content from it appears in these My Menus. If it's a folder that you're constantly throwing stuff in, you might want to set it to scan daily or monitored, so these menus are constantly updated. If it's a folder you're never going to add more stuff to, you can just set it to scan once. If you set it as private, you'll still be able to access it by using Boxy's file browser, but it won't show up in your My Menus. Scanning is an imperfect process, and as well as Boxy handles it, it's likely it won't be able to recognize everything you feed it. Obviously, the best way to avoid errors is to name your files correctly and avoid misspellings. I've also provided a link in the show notes to the Boxy documentation on the best way to name your files. If you don't want to mess around with My Menus, or you're still waiting on Boxy to finish scanning, you can access any folder that you've added to Boxy by going to the Files section in the main menu. This brings up a file browser that works just like you'd expect a file browser to work. The big draw for many users of Boxy, however, is the easy access to streaming online content. The best part of how Boxy handles this is that it's content specific. Say for instance you want to watch Lost. Instead of remembering which network owns it and what the URL happens to be, you can do a search for Lost and Boxy will bring it up giving you the option of watching on Hulu or locally if you have it stored on your computer. Additional content from some sources, however, 
will require using one of the many third-party applications using the app section in Boxy. Using an app is surprisingly simple. All you need to do is select it and press start. Apps are organized much like the TV shows. You can browse popular apps by using the apps library. And you can add an app to your My menu by selecting Add to My Apps. If you've got an iPhone, iPod Touch, iPad, Android, Palm, or Windows mobile device, there's a Boxy remote app that will allow you to control Boxy via Wi-Fi. You'll need to install the remote app on your device and go to Settings, Network, Servers, and ensure that Enable Web Server is checked. If you have a firewall, you'll need to add an exception for Boxy. The Boxy remote on iOS is unique in that it has this feature called Gesture, which allows you to move the cursor by swiping across the screen. I'm not crazy about it myself, which is why I tend to use the traditional button interface. My favorite thing about the remote app, though, is that it's contextual. If you're moving around the interface, you have the directional buttons. If you enter a search field, it brings up a keyboard. And if you're playing a video, you get the standard play, pause, and volume controls. Thanks for watching. As always, you can view this video or any of my other technology learning videos for free at ThoughtShots.com, where you can also find a full transcript of this video, as well as show notes and related web links.